Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I think um, you all uh, would allow me to thank uh, Dr. Curtis, as well as uh, Astrid Johansson and Dr. Rohani for organizing this extremely timely um, uh, seminar for us today. Um, as John said, um, the IHF should usually just mind uh, Iran's business. Uh, but I think the scale of uh, a calamity which is befalling this region is so high that we must do away with uh, narrow um, mandates and try to do whatever we can do to, uh, to give this um, issue uh, as much publicity and also understanding of what's going on um, in there. So um, uh, uh, I think, as John said, uh, Iran has been largely saved by deliberate destruction of uh, monuments. Uh, I was speaking to one of the participants here who was actually in Shiraz at the time that uh, our hothead Ayatollah Khalkhali uh, took his bulldozers and tried to um, destroy Persepolis because it glorified the kings too much, he said. Um, and um, it, you know, it was, as John said, it was an amazing experiment. Locals, uh, normal people, these were not uh, you know, highly educated archeologists. Normal people just say, this is part of our memory, this is our history and we won't allow anybody to destroy it. And they really risk their lives by standing in front of bulldozers and uh, you know, guns until somebody in Tehran woke up. Uh, I think Mr. Bazargan went to see the Ayatollah and uh, you know, they all together decided this wasn't a good idea. Uh, so uh, we have had our own close, uh, uh, I think, uh, shave uh, uh, on this. Now, uh, without Further ado, what I would like to do is introduce our next three speakers. John, is that okay? Mr. Dr. Curtis, John, yes. can I introduce all three? Or you are going to introduce the ones after you? Shall I introduce everyone? No, just me. Just you, okay. <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> you see who is the puppet master here? <laughs> uh, well, uh, that's an easy job. Uh, everybody knows John. Uh, John has been the CEO of IHF since January 2014, and it's been a great honor and a coup for the IHF, really, to be able to um, reel um, John in as the biggest catch I think we've ever had in the 20-year history of the IHF. And these three conferences that John referred to, this one, I think, in specific, uh, are really um, um, uh, very much in the sweet spot of John. Uh, he was the, um, of course, keeper of the Middle East Department at the British Museum uh, between 1989 and 2011, keeper of uh, special Middle East projects 2012 and 13, and he was elected fellow of the British Academy in 2003. And I think this is huge accolade to John's uh, academic standing and in incredibly important work he's done on the archeology span of Iran and the region. Uh, throughout his careers, John has been interested both in Iran and Iraq, and he edited the report on the damage at Babylon for UNESCO. Uh, he is leading the campaign to uh, set up a new uh, museum uh, at Basra, and um, is really um, a legend and a hero uh, for us all in Iran. So with that, John, if I could ask you to maybe start your speech, and then you probably introduce everybody else after you. Thank you. Oh, good morning again. Um, I'm going to start by talking about um, Iraq in the uh, pre-Islamic uh, period. And um, I'll just very briefly um, review the run-up to 2014. Um, as you all know, um, there was extensive damage to Iraqi cultural heritage uh, before and during the um, Second Gulf War. The uh, Iraq Museum um, was uh, looted in um, 2003, um, actually before um, American uh, the American military arrived to safeguard um, the building, and uh, there was a, a lot of um, objects um, that were still left in the museum uh, were vandalized um, and destroyed, and uh, many things um, were stolen. 
Um, these are two of the treasures um, which are still uh, missing, and all together with about 8,000 objects um, from the uh, stores of the museum, including the irreplaceable collection of cylinder seals. Um, uh, this is Mosul um, Museum, which was um, destroyed at exactly uh, the same time as the museum in Baghdad, uh, leading one to conclude um, that uh, these uh, efforts were clearly part of um, a well-organized plan. Um, Babylon um, was damaged as a result of the um, occupation or by coalition forces and many archaeological sites uh, in southern Iraq um, were looted. Uh, this was one of the worst, um, the site of um, Isin, but there were you can, many others. You can see that the surface of the mound is covered with um, looters' holes. Uh, and this is the site of um, Lhasa, which um, I visited with the British Army in 2007 in order to do uh, an inspection. But if the damage to Iraqi cultural heritage was very serious during and after the Second Gulf War, uh, nobody, I think, could have predicted just how bad the situation would become uh, in 2014. Uh, and Mosul uh, has borne the brunt um, of, um, of this. Um, it fell to ISIS on the 10th of June um, uh, last year. Uh, and one of their first acts was actually to um, blow up uh, the shrine on the, uh, one of the um, ancient mounds of um, ancient Nineveh, the shrine uh, dedicated to the prophet Jonah, known as um, Nebi Yunus. Uh, it was actually a, a landmark um, to be seen from um, many miles away, the minaret um, of, the, uh, of the mosque. Well, I'm not going to talk about damage to uh, Islamic shrines because Lamia Gailani is going to talk about that uh, after me. But the reason I put this on um, is to tell you that uh, uh, underneath um, the shrine, um, you see the shrine is actually built uh, on a massive um, archaeological mound which uh, contains the remains of uh, the palaces of one of the Assyrian kings, the king uh, known as Esau Haddon. And uh, it was hoped by uh, archaeologists that um, the uh, remains of the palace underneath the mosque would not come to the attention of um, archaeologists after, uh, of ISIS after they'd blown up the mosque. But unfortunately, uh, it did, and they've now destroyed the uh, Assyrian gateway figures that were uh, underneath the mosque. Then, um, in uh, October 2014, um, the um, officer responsible for the safeguarding of the um, site of Nineveh um, was uh, executed together with um, uh, his colleagues, uh, and at his funeral, um, uh, the mourners um, were attacked and uh, more than 50 of them um, taken away. So that really set the scene for um, what was um, going to happen uh, shortly. Uh, in December um, 2014, um, bombs were planted around the fortifications of the town of Tel Afa, um, west of uh, Mosul. Um, for no obvious uh, reason, in fact, because there were no um, visible sculptures um, or anything like that. The only reason can have been that these fortifications um, were believed to date from the uh, Assyrian period. In fact, I don't think they did. I think they were probably uh, medieval, but um, uh, that's uh, not really important. The fact is um, that they were uh, partly blown up. Uh, and then, uh, in February um, of this year, um, we had something even more shocking, um, which was the trashing of the uh, museum in Mosul. Now, I expect some of you have seen um, the videos that have been um, posted, um, showing one shows uh, Mosul Museum, um, one um, shows uh, the destruction of Nimrud, and another one shows um, Hatra. 
Uh, I had thought that I might um, show you these videos, but I've decided it probably wouldn't be um, a very good idea. So uh, we're just going to see a few stills um, extracted um, from, the, uh, from the videos. So uh, this is uh, the, the militants inside the um, Iraq, inside the Mosul Museum, um, destroying pretty much everything um, that they could lay their hands on. Um, just throwing things over and um, smashing them up. And uh, it's unfortunate that um, at the time this happened, uh, the media immediately reported that uh, most of the um, statues and reliefs that were left in the museum were casts. Um, this is actually um, not true at all. Uh, and of more than 50 um, sculptures in the museum, uh, only about a half a dozen um, were um, actually uh, casts. Um, for anybody who is actually interested in statistics, um, of 24 reliefs from Nimrud and Nineveh, um, 21 um, were um, originals. And um, of material from Hatra, I'll say a bit more about Hatra uh, in a moment, um, 26 were originals and four um, were casts. Um, and in fact, um, the video does mainly show the destruction of um, statues uh, from uh, Hatra. It is possible um, that the Assyrian pieces have not been um, so badly damaged and that um, uh, they've been preserved in order to sell them and traffic them, uh, but we just don't know that um, uh, for the time being. Um, it's, this is something I think that we'll come back to um, later uh, today. Well, on this very same um, video, um, we can see um, an assault on the uh, Assyrian um, winged bulls um, in one of the gates of Nineveh, um, the um, Nergal uh, gate. Um, those of you who have seen the videos know that they're all prefaced by um, the same sort of thing. Um, this character, I think, is in um, uh, two of them. Uh, I believe he comes from Saudi Arabia. Is that uh, right? His uh, accent's been identified as being from Saudi Arabia. Anyway, uh, he introduces um, two of them, and uh, the spiel is um, uh, always uh, the same, as quoting some things from, from the Quran and then... Um, uh, and then uh, reciting their justification for um, destroying the monuments. Um, so there we have uh, the Nergal Gate at um, Nineveh. These are two gateway figures originally excavated by Henry Layard in the middle of the um, 19th um, century. And uh, they were, as you can see, uh, destroyed by uh, power drills and um, sledgehammers. So that's the um, Mosul uh, Museum. Um, moving on now to um, Nimrud, um, where the Northwest Palace was destroyed uh, in March um, of, uh, of this year. This is the site of um, Nimrud with the uh, ziggurat, that cone-shaped building um, on the right-hand side. Uh, it is um, a little bit uh, nearer. Um, and the site itself um, of Nimrud is very large, um, 360 um, hectares um, altogether. And in one corner uh, of the enclosure, um, there's an Acropolis mound or uh, a citadel. And these are all the buildings on that part, on the citadel, which have been excavated. And what we're looking at, going to look at particularly, is this building here, which is the palace of Ashurnasipal who reigned in the 9th century BC from 883 to um, 859. It's a very large palace uh, measuring about uh, 200 uh, meters by um, 130 uh, meters. Um, excavations there were originally undertaken um, by uh, Layard in the middle of the uh, 19th century. He found um, many um, reliefs or stone uh, carvings which uh, decorated the walls um, of the palace, uh, many of them showing the king sitting in state or uh, hunting, um, 
or, or leading his army um, into, uh, into battle. And although um, it's certainly true that uh, many of these reliefs uh, were later taken away from Nimrud uh, and brought to places um, like the uh, British Museum, quite a large number actually uh, remained on the site. This incidentally is um, uh, Layard's reconstruction about how the throne room um, at Nimrud um, would have looked. So these are some of the um, sculptures which were still in position <coughs> at, um, at Nimrud. Um, you see that um, the palace was actually quite um, extensively renovated and it was the only place in the world where you could walk around uh, an Assyrian palace and get some idea of what one of these, what would, one of these buildings would originally um, have looked like. And another great joy was that a number of the sculptures um, at Dimrud uh, still had traces of paint on them. All the sculptures which have been brought to the West um, and are now in Western museums uh, were scrubbed clean um, on arrival and all traces of the paint were removed. And it was only at Nimrud that you could still find the sculptures uh, with paint um, still on them. Well, this is another one um, with paint on it um, after it started to be uh, damaged and destroyed by ISIS militants. Um, now, coming on to the destruction, this is the sorts of scenes that are shown uh, in the uh, video. You can see um, that um, uh, they put barrels of fertilizer, fertilizer explosive um, all around uh, the walls um, underneath, the, uh, underneath the sculptures. And look, you can see how these have still got paint uh, on them. Um, this was the reconstructed uh, palace contained uh, within all of these buildings um, here. This is the uh, explosion resulting um, from the planting of all those uh, explosives. And this is what now remains of um, that palace, absolutely, um, completely nothing. Whether it will ever be possible um, to extract any of the destroyed reliefs to put them back together, um, even to uh, rebuild um, the, the palace are questions that will have to be asked um, in the future. Very definitely, it would be a hugely um, expensive and difficult undertaking. Um, I want to now turn to the last place that I want to consider, um, which, was, uh, which is Hatra. Um, this, uh, was the subject of a video posted in uh, April. Um, a few of you perhaps have been to Hatra and know that uh, it's a, a wonderful, wonderfully well-preserved uh, city from the um, first to third centuries AD, from the Parthian period, um, about 60 miles um, west of Mosul um, in the uh, desert. Uh, and Hatra, um, was uh, the site of um, what's often referred to as the first um, Arab kingdom because the rulers of um, uh, Hatra were, I think, um, Semitic, but there is very extensive um, Parthian influence uh, at the site, and to all intents and purposes, it was a Parthian uh, client kingdom. Um, the video of Hatra... Uh, th this is the, some pictures of Hatra. Well, no, sorry. I, I think I had no, this some pictures of Hatra before it was uh, destroyed, but uh, I d don't seem to have. Um, th this is uh, the sort of thing that was shown um, in the uh, video. But I have to say, there's uh, very much less detail um, in this video uh, than there was um, in... Uh, the ones about Mosul Museum uh, and Nimrud, and we still don't know the scale of the destruction um, at Hatra, and that's because all of these places, um, of course, have been out of bounds for the local um, inhabitants. So we're really awaiting news, but um, I think some of us are probably um, fearing the worst. We shall have to wait and see. 
Well, I just want, lastly, to touch on the question of the destruction of memory and the intangible heritage, uh, because that is uh, one of the areas to be covered by the conference, and to ask um, what's the point of all this. Um, certainly the images, or some of the images, not all of them, are idolatrous, uh, uh, but they are uh, very ancient, and it can't possibly be imagined that anybody um, worships them nowadays or even really knows um, what they're supposed to be. And nor does um, any modern group associate themselves very closely with these ancient remains. Modern um, Assyrian Christians would probably identify themselves as the heirs to these remains, rightly or wrongly, but there are few Assyrians now uh, in the region, most of them uh, being in Chicago, who is the biggest Assyrian community nowadays. So what's the point then um, of the destruction? Well, firstly, I think one has to acknowledge that a few people may be motivated um, by um, religion. That certainly seems um, to be the reason for the destruction of all the mosques and shrines uh, in the vicinity of um, Mosul, which Lamia Gailani um, is going to um, tell us about. But um, there are uh, many who um, are quite a bit skeptical, let us say, um, about, uh, about that. Uh, a second reason, and I think this is probably um, a more significant one, um, is to remove any traces of pre-ISIS um, civilization. In other words, um, life begins with um, ISIS, and the allegiance um, of everybody should be um, with uh, ISIS, and none of the local inhabitants should be um, harking, harking back uh, to some sort of earlier golden age. Uh, a third possible reason, uh, no, it's not a possible reason, it's a probable reason, is to upset people um, in the West. Um, the PR value of these um, videos is obviously um, very well known um, to the people um, in ISIS, and I dare say to some extent, um, people in the West have um, reacted with the horror that they hoped um, that we would. And a fourth reason, I think, is to assert authority, um, to do these things, um, knowing that the destruction um, is against the will of some local people. In, in other words, um, to clearly uh, indicate who's in charge in any particular reason, a region. Um, but I must say, whatever the motivation, um, these acts of vandalism are uh, a quite inexcusable assault on a cultural heritage, really, um, that belongs to the whole world. So uh, with those words, I'll um, close. And thank you for listening. And uh, uh, I'll ask Bahid to come back to the stage. Thank you.